For today's video, we have part two of what caught my eye over the Amy community series. So this is, these are the final four games that I didn't cover in part one. And yeah, we'll just go over players individually and yeah, it should be good. So the first game is the mighty Crom versus Port. Crom are gonna lose a lot of games this year. Uh, the list is, I think it's second or the, the youngest in the league. Does that affect Laird, who's the first player I'll speak about? Maybe a little bit, but I liked what I saw from Laird. For me, Laird is holding that close midfield together. It's what makes the midfield competitive that they were you know, in the last few games of last year. I wouldn't say Laird's the top two block that he was just because of the way defenders are going, uh, but I feel he's a very safe option and I really like his midfield work. I think he's an outstanding midfielder. Uh, all Australian squad caliber midfielder for me. Um, so yeah, big tick for Laird. Be very happy with that. 12 contested. Uh, he's my D2. And thanks, just quickly, I should go over Matt Crouch. Matt Crouch is a possible upgrade target, interrupted preseason. Um, so yeah, don't, don't bother with Matt Crouch as a starting pick. Uh, McPherson is an interesting one, so he's a mid pricer. I think he's the new Laird in defense for the Crows, so he rebounds a fair bit. And he's actually a good defender. So maybe one for A for Fantasy and Draft. Um, but yes, I think he's gonna score pretty well. I think he's gonna go 85 plus this year. Uh, just something I wanted to point out. Uh, Riley O'Brien never, I, I think last preseason he was pretty poor and he was pretty poor again to the, uh, this game. So I wouldn't, there's no really, there's no re, re, there's no real reason to pick Riley O'Brien at all. So with Gordon Grundy there. So I expect him to be better in the actual, in the season, but just seems to be poor in preseason. Uh, Jordan Butts is an interesting one and I actually have him in my team right now. He's so 177k defender. He can take a few intercepts and he can actually um, possess the ball in defense. You know, guys, for example, when Talia plays for the Crows, he basically never has the ball. Not the best kick, um, but yeah, Bud seems to get a little bit of the pill. Had a minor ankle issue, I think, so went off the ground to see how he goes for round one. I think he's gonna make a bit of money and I think his job security is actually very good. So it's a little bit awkward, 177K, but I'm not sure what defender rookies we get. It's looking pretty shaky at the moment, so one to consider. Jimmy Rowe, lock him in. I have him on field F6. Might struggle against the Cats. The small forwards seem to struggle against the Cats, I think. Uh, well, anyway, well, the Crows small forwards in the past have struggled. Like, Eddie Betts never does any, did anything against the Cats. Uh, but yeah, lock him in. You can play him on field, I think, and or bench, whatever. Sam Berry, unfortunately, didn't get much game time. I believe the coaches said that he needs to, him and Pedler need to be integrated into the game plan or understand the game plan a little bit little bit better. So chances are he probably doesn't play round one. I know Schoenberg was dreadful. Uh, I thought Berry's had a better preseason than him, so I would play Berry round one if I was the Crows. Sounds like they're gonna, he, he's gonna play at some point this year though, but not sure that round one. So on to Port, Dan Houston. He took a trillion marks, and I think it was just, Paul just had the ball the whole game, and as soon as the Crows won a clearance, it just came straight back out of, of Port's defense. So, uh, it's an interesting one. He was he was gulling a fair bit the back half of last year. I think you could if you wanted to. I feel there are safe options, and I'm just not exactly sure with Houston. So, uh, yeah, I think they're gonna use him a lot at defense. I can see him going 100 this year, but uh, not exactly sure. So Elia took a trillion intercept marks because the Crows, Crows, yeah, just kicking inside 50 wasn't great and our tall forwards aren't great either. So that means intercept marks. We seem to kick to Elia a lot. So I'm not sure he's an option, but he's a very good intercept marker and we'll see that throughout the season. Zach Butters, the role was not good for me. So high half forward a lot of the time. I think he'll get some mid time, so it might make him like a sub primo, I'm not sure. But he's a star butters. I, yeah, he's an unbelievable player, just creative player, good finisher. Love him. Love to watch him. But I'm not sure how much big time he gets, and it didn't look like it. It looked like mostly half forward to me. Possible upgrade target for me, um, and yeah, obviously playing the Crows, he's gonna score a lot. Robbie Gray is Robbie Gray, so I think he. I didn't really pay much attention to him, but I score. I saw him score 120. But with with Robbie Gray, feels like given his age. Um, and probably going to be shafted forward some games. Upgrade target. But you're probably going to win a lot of games. It's going to help Graham Brothers score. Brosie's an obvious trap. Too much floor time and the foot injury going in for surgery. So I'm not sure he plays round one. Um, but yeah, one for the future in the midfield. 
Um, Lockie Jones, I don't think he plays round one because I think Harlett comes back in. Well, I think actually Bergman probably goes out for Hartlett. Well, Ber- Bergman was actually quite good rebounding off halfback. Lockie Jones reminds me of Foggy, where he just tries to nail people. Um, maybe unnecessarily, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but it seems to really like getting physical. So, not sure on Lockie Jones. I don't think he plays round one. Bergman, if he plays round one, I think we start him. Good, um, because Port seems to like can uh, keep, they seem to keep playing the kids when they do play. But yeah, I, I, I'm not optimistic on getting Jones or Bergman, but we'll see how we go. And also, just quickly touch on Ollie Wines. I thought he was very good in for a big year, but I feel like there are safe options. I actually like what uh, Wines the most at his price range, at about 550 I have another name here, but I can't read it. Oh, Fantasia. So Fantasia scored like 80 before halftime. Not a super coach friendly role. I know he's cheap, but yeah, playing the Crows, goals galore. But he looks good, looks fit. The next player, oh, we'll go to the next game. The West Coast versus Frio. So Liam Duggan, I thought he was good, but again, he's a midfielder now, it seems, and I think yeah, B was going, players are scoring more in defence, so maybe he would have scored more in defence, I don't know, but yeah, I was impressed with his midfield work. I feel like he's going to be stuck in the 90s somewhere, so it's probably not going to cut it, based on what we've seen in the midfield, in the defence. Andrew Gaff, same old story, needs to get 35 touches to score 100, I had him last year, don't pick Andrew Gaff, please. And Shepard was pretty good continuing on, continuing on from last year, but I feel like there are better options, but maybe Shepard uh, scores really well this year, I'm not sure. So not a whole lot of re- relevance from West Coast. Fremantle, now five looked unreal. A lot of forward time, I think it was more, probably more in the second half. But yeah, same story with Nat five is he gets knocks, he gets injuries, soft tissue ones as well. Uh... Probably upgrade target maybe later on, um, like later in the season when the durability risk isn't as high. So, wouldn't go for him early. Uh, but yeah, star should be a should be a great pick um, later on in the season in my opinion. Andrew Brayshaw thought he could have got a bit more of the ball. Um, thought he got more of it the week before. Oh, I think there's just safe options and his time on the ground. I think it was actually a bit better. I can't remember. I think it was like eighty something. Start of the game was a bit low, but. Uh, that was encouraging, so might have a big year, I'm not sure, but we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I feel like there are safer options. Hayden Young, I thought was okay, didn't take any marks apparently, so uh, not really sure. I just feel like he's too expensive for what he can do at his age. So, first full pre season, maybe injury prone, I guess, but yeah, not, not exactly sure. I feel like he's a waste of money, to be honest, but. Um, should score okay with a few kickouts. Lloyd Meek was in the ruck. He was actually pretty good. So I think he plays round one, but the problem but the problem is Sean Darcy is supposed to be back in the early rounds. So does he just play the first three or four games and then you're stuck with him when he goes out? He could actually possibly hold a spot over Darcy, I think. Probably better to ask for your supporters, but we'll see. I wouldn't be starting him because I feel like there's a good chance we could be stuck. If he if Darcy comes back in, so it's a tough one. I think it's probably better to do a bit of research on that one, but that seems the likely case for me. And Tracy he's not going to score much, and I don't think he plays round one, so probably ignore him. Tracy's not a loophole because a loophole needs to not play. Tracy might actually play. Um, he showed some really good signs in the preseason, and Freo tools are very injury prone. So use Combin as your loophole. I know he's more money, but trust trust me on this. You don't want you don't want your loophole being emergency some weeks. It's not you don't want to be in that situation. So that's just my view. But yeah. Now the dogs mids. Oh, I've been waiting for this. The dogs mids. So what's interesting about this is Luke Beveridge had some good things to say about bon- uh, dunks, and it did remind me. So I was watching Seinfeld the other the other day. It's where George Costanza. Basically, he's had enough of his job. Tells his boss that he's a loser, he's useless, he's an idiot, etc. Quits, and then realizes that he's unemployed. He actually needs a job, so he goes back in the next week and acts like it never happened. He's like, "Me? I was kidding. I never meant anything I said um, about you know religious and stuff like that." That's pretty much what Beveridge did um, today after the game, where he had all good things to say about Josh Dunkley. So, yeah, he did backtrack on his comments. 
But yeah, now we can speak about my favourite midfielders. So Bontempelli, I mean, I could, it's one thing to note when the Dogs played Melbourne. Melbourne were, were no Oliver, no Viney, no Brayshaw. So very much a bunch of kids. But we saw the role. McRae got the most CBAs. Dunks got a lot of mid-time, a little bit of full-time as well. Probably switched with Libra a bit. And Bond got heaps of mid-time as well. And he kicked three goals. So... Bond, Dunks, McRae, tick, tick, tick. You can start them, I'm pretty sure. I know Trelaw wasn't there. I can't confirm this, but if someone on Discord was saying that he played a little bit of halfback, um, don't take my word for that. I'll need to follow that up. Um, but yeah, Bond, Dunks, McRae, massive ticks. McRae is absolutely locked for me. Uh, he looked unbelievable. Um, it seems like this is, seems like this could be um, like what they're going to go for in round one like a dress rehearsal. So, I know Trello's going to come back, but even if they if their mid-time gets cut, they're still going to score enough because if these guys get the mid-time, they're all going to average 130. Maybe Bob will get tagged, but you know, if he wasn't tagged, these guys are 130 players. So, McCray's a lock for me. He did enough. Uh, Bond, I'm not, I don't think I'll pick Bond, but I'd like to. I just think he gets tagged and stuff like that and might play more forward at times. Uh, probably an upgrade target, but yeah, no issue. Bond can... He can get to 700k. It's very possible. And Josh Dunkley is by far, and it's not close, F1. I said it all preseason. If Dunkley doesn't get the mid-time, he averages 100 on with, like, barely any CBAs. Also, Bebo said that he loves dunks today, by the way. Um, but, yeah. If he does get the mid-time and you don't have him, your season is over because he's going to average 120, 130. So, so yeah, big tick for Dunkley. Lock him in at F1, no questions. Don't try and tell me Dangerfield's better. He's not. Dunkley, F1. Caleb Daniel did whatever he wanted. He's going to get tagged at times. In fact, he got tagged in the second quarter, and I don't know what happened. Trial game, who cares? So, big tick, Daniel, lock him in. Bailey Smith, wing the whole game, big rip. And McNeil and Scott, um, yeah, poor Baz, but it happens. Uh, McNeil and Scott, so I'm not... McNeil could be a bench option. I'm not sure he plays. And I think Scott was playing in defence. I think he had Johannesson's role. So I think he looked good, and I think he would get play round one. So I'm not sure in his job security, but we'll look into that. So yeah, very happy with the dog's mids. And yeah, I was very a bit worried. Maybe I'll overreact and misinterpret things, but at the same time, you can only go on, on what you hear. So um, yeah, it was against weak opposition, but the CBA is the mid-time... That's what we were looking for. On to Melbourne. Stephen May was very good. I think he he wasn't concussed. He had a head knock, but yeah, it was deemed not concussion, so he'll be right for round one. I, me personally, I see him as durability risk, even though he it seems like he's upped his off-field sort of stuff in the past year. Um, I think he's going to score a lot, as he did in the back half of last year. Uh, Christian Petrarca, not good. Um, didn't think he did much. Didn't really do much around the ground. It seemed to rest forward a fair bit so obviously it was a very tough time for the Melbourne mids I still I think he's more of an upgrade target and in hindsight you know with the new rules less interchange um, seems like there's less stoppages less uh, small sample size but that's what it seems like a little bit worried about Christian Petrarca so um, it's yeah not a whole lot going for him in terms of the rule changes but he's had a really big preseason, and we'll see how he goes with Oliver and stuff. This seems like a, just pick the safe options and wait, wait on Christian Petrarca. Um, yeah, so upgrade target for me. Max Gorn. So Luke Jackson rocked a little more than I thought. A little concerning, but over my dead body, will I not start Max Gorn? He's too good. So yeah, obviously probably not going to average one thirty five again, but nonetheless. He's Max Gorn. Once the real stuff starts, he'll get going. James Harms, very obvious trap. Uh, might get moved around, but played a fair bit of mid-time. Three mids out. We're not going to see James Harms with the other mids in. And I believe he was moved around in the practice game. So, very obvious trap. Don't even bother. thought Chandler was good, but I think there's a few competition for spots. He's a, price, a little bit pricey as well, so not sure. Uh, Jordan, not sure he holds his spot. James Jordan, that is. Not sure he holds his spot for Melbourne. Um, didn't do a whole lot, but how can you against that midfield? So on to the final game, which was Brisbane versus um, 
Gold Coast. So unfortunately, Brainerd right looks like he's done his ACL, but it was a trap anyway. But all the best to him. Uh, Lockie Neal started slow, but it was just a reminder that second half that he can score pretty quick and he pretty much waltz to a 100 score. So I don't think I'll start Neal, not because he scored 100, but because of his limited preseason. He's the, the main, the, the number one guy that I'm worried about not starting because he's probably fine over that calf now. So, uh, yeah, it's not going to be pretty when you don't start Neil at times, but you're just going to have to hold tight, I think. But yeah, probably did enough to be happy with selecting him. Uh, Joe Lyons, why would you bother? Um, Zach Bailey was okay, but I think he's going to get moved around. I'm not sure he's going to get enough pure mid-time to be a good selection, uh, but he looks good, definitely improved. Um, so Fullerton's another one he's a rookie so I think McStay's done his like PCL so three to six weeks I read so Fullerton might play early uh, I don't feels like he's better off on a bench on the bench I'm not exactly sure what's going on with him um, but yeah he might come out of the side as soon as McStay's back I'm not exactly sure we'll have to look that up and yeah no Eli Smith be disappointing and on to Gold Coast Enough, not, didn't really get any rookies here, but the one to watch was Matthew Rao. So Matthew Rao only had two tackles, so that was the main thing I was watching, but he played okay in the first half. Here's the thing with Rao. I want players, they need to be flying in the preseason when you're paying a decent price for them. So for that reason, um, no for Rao. He's 500k, unproven over a long period of time. But he looked really good. Lots of contested possessions. He's a gun. No doubt about it. But because of the shoulder, he's been eased in. It doesn't fill me with confidence. And I didn't see high tackle numbers, so maybe that affects his scoring. I'm not sure. Very small sample size. Was poor the week before. I think he can be a good pick. But for me, I'd rather pick the big dogs and pay 500k for a defender who's probably going to score a lot of points. So that's all for me. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you guys soon.